Happy Sunday. So it was a nice warm one today, isn't it? I uh, I kind of like the cooler weather. I'm gonna miss that. <laughs> I knew I knew it wouldn't wouldn't last forever though. <laughs> oh, get the comments up here. Oh, hi Shannon. Let's see who else came in. Jan, hi Jan. I have to look back and forth. So, so it's working tonight. Well, everybody's able to get in and find me. I am fine, Shannon. Thank you. We we had a little outing today. Um, my friend Lynn and Judy and I went and took a little outing today. So it was really fun. I, I don't do that very often. So we went over to a stamp. It's called Stamp Mania over in Cedar Rapids. And it was very, it was awing. <laughs> I can't, I can't describe to you what it was like to walk into that store. I've never seen so many things in my life. <laughs> so I was like a deer in the headlights because I'm totally not in my element <laughs> with stamping and card making and stuff. But it was very fun. I did get a few things to, to, to learn. I want to learn. So, so how is everybody tonight? Looks like people are coming in. I'm going to go ahead and turn the banner off here. Just a second. And let's see if I can get, Oh, there we go. Get back to the comments. Very warm. It is very warm. Who said that? Marianne. Yes. Oh, cool. So, um, I think what I need to do, StreamYard has been a little bit weird. So I think what I need to do is um, clear my browser history before I start the next live every week. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, that seemed to help. So hello. We got some new people coming in from all over the place. So, okay. So I, I wanted to show you, of course, we're making this little pillow tonight. Now, one of the gals just a little bit ago said, that looks really hard. Well, you know, I couldn't figure out exactly how they did it when I just looked at the picture, but it isn't hard. It's so basically what this pillow is, is this piece here is done in one hooping. Um, and then this piece here is done in one hooping and it's, and it becomes the applique for the pineapple. So, and then the rest of it's done in a second hooping. So yeah, I know. Isn't it funny? Cause it's, I have, I have lights on because it's dark out here, even when it's light outside, but I do have, I have to close the blind behind me. Otherwise the sun would be like blaring at you <laughs> going through that when that door. So, so anyway, this is not, it looks very hard, but it really isn't. This takes a little bit of time. This little, this little applique part. And these are all raw edge. These little things, these little flippers, they're all raw edges, little half square triangles. So we'll we'll talk about the fabrics first, and then um, I'll explain that to you. And I was going to show you, I'll show you these at the end. Because we're going to have a break next week, because next week is Father's Day. So we're, gonna, we're not going to have class next Sunday night. And uh, I've got some other things I'm going to show you, show you afterwards to show you what we're going to be doing the following the following weeks. So, but, um, so anyway, this is not as hard, near as hard as it looks. It's actually really fun. So let me go ahead and get the camera down here and we'll go ahead and start talking about the fabrics and stuff. So, okay. Let me, whoops. Got to find the right spot here. Works better if I get the camera down so you can see what I'm going to do here. Right. Okay. All right. So hopefully you can still hear me better to get the camera the the microphone on the other camera is better um because it's it's less i have to really make sure i leave my face right at the mic at the computer for the other one so okay so here's our little pillow so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this applique part here with all the little the half square triangles on it and then we're going to put just do just it's just a real simple applique after that i know it looks really hard but okay so let's take, take a look at what we need for fabric. Um, stabilizer wise, um, I did use a cutaway for the first hooping, which is for the little applique piece with all the half square triangles. So I'm just using a no-show mesh for that. And then the second hooping, I use tearaway like I always do on these. So this one here, I pre-sewn a little bit just because this 
is very repetitive and I didn't want to bore you just doing the same thing over and over again. So um, the hooping one is going to be this little applique. So I've started it and I'll show you how to start it. But this is the little applique part. And I put no show mesh in there. Okay. And then the second hooping is going to be the actual pillow. And then this one, I've got my tear away, you know, and I use my normal um, shape flex on the back of the fabric. And I used the, the glue stick and glued it down and then hooped it just like I've done for almost all of these. So, okay. So that's that one. You do need, okay. So that's the, the, the stabilizers you for the pillow back fabric. We need a piece of shape flex. So we got, this is my pillow back fabric. The one with the little black polka dots on it. I think the other one was red. My other pillow was red, I think, but this one is, you need this piece here plus shape flex on the back of this one. So I have shape flex in the back of that. And then you need some borders and some backs. So these are my borders and backs. Okay, so in the little cherry fabric. And here's my backs. Okay, and I already pre-hemmed those because we've been hemming these for, you know, for almost a year. We were almost done with these guys. And um, so I just pre-hemmed them so that you wouldn't have to sit there and watch me hem. Okay, and then um, for the pineapple top, Let's see, base fabric. Okay. The pineapple top is the um, the top of the pineapple, the green here. Okay. So that's what this is right here. And it's like four and a half by four. This little piece right here is what they're talking about. And then the pineapple base. So when you make these little, this little um, piece of applique, there's this base that you're going to put everything on. And this is part of the applique. So you need this fabric, which is eight by six, but then you also need a piece of shape flex on the back. So this has a, I can't, can't get it angled right so you can see it. So this has shape flex on the back of it as well. Okay. So that has the shape flex. And then you need 24 little squares that are two by two. So I have four different fabrics and I cut six little two by two squares out of each one. And then what I did is I cut them, you know, diagonally, you know, like this. So then, then they become half square triangles. Okay. And that's on the next page. So I'll show the, show you that again, but I, I cut out 24 little two inch squares and there's four different fabrics here. And then I cut them in half corner to corner. Okay. Just to make half square triangles out of them. All right. So that's, that's the little applique part. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody for the fabrics? And then I only use three colors in this. I used um, my sugar cane, which is 1128. It's a yellow for the pineapple parts. And I used um, the, the fresh green and the forest green for the top of the leaf, for the leaf on the pineapple. Oh, somebody was running late. Who's running late? Oh, Pat. Pat was running late. I can understand that. I took a little trip today to Cedar Rapids and I was running a little late too. All right. So let me turn the page here and then let's look quickly again. The Shape Flex. I wish I could get this down just a little bit more. There we go. Um, the Shape Flex is going to be back on the back of your background fabric, which is this yellow fabric right here that I put in the hoop on this the no show mesh stabilizer this is the background for this for the, all the little half square triangles okay and i put and then i cut my the next step shows you cutting the little squares all those 24 little squares into half square triangles so cut them diagonally okay so that's pretty self self um you know that's pretty self you know you can you can read that pretty closely and it's easy to see now the design is kind of weird looking it's um just a bunch of lines, okay? They have a star in the top left-hand corner. So they want, they, that is for orientation so that you have it oriented correctly in the hoop. And this goes in a five by seven hoop, okay? So I have brought this up on my screen of my machine and you can see here's the little star. We're not gonna sew the star out. It's just there as a reference to where the top left-hand corner is, okay? So just make sure that it's not like flipped in your hoop or something. Okay. So that's there. And then I, the next step says to put no show mesh in your hoop, which I have done here. 
And if you give me a second, I'm going to lay my little triangles out here on my machine. All my little colors, I got them all in, in a pile here, each little piles. Okay. So I, I hooped my no show mesh stabilizer in the hoop. And then, and I've done some of this. And the reason I did is because there's 10 rows of these little guys and it doesn't take very long, but it's just the same thing over and over. And I didn't want to bore you by watch, doing the same thing over. So I did like half of them. Okay. So I put my no show mesh in the, in the hoop. The first step in the book on number three, step number one in the machine is just going to be a placement line for that background fabric. And then I'm going to lay the background fabric down, which I've already done here. You can see it. And then step number two in the machine is going to tack it down. Now, it does say to change the, the thread to a contrasting thread. I didn't. I could easily see my yellow thread. So I just left the yellow thread in because I could see it real well. Okay, it's dark enough that I can see it. Um, and that's going to tack it down to the hoop. Okay. Then it says to go back to the background matching fabric thread. So um, that matches the fabric, I should say. So I, I just left the same color in is my sugar cane. And the first thing it does is it sews out this line. Okay. And it has like little tick marks on it. So it has the line. And I'm going to show someone out here in a minute. But it has little tick lines. And that helps you know where to go and put your little your little triangles in. Okay. Um, so just so you know, the odd rows, like row one, three, five, seven, and so on, have five little, you're going to put five little triangles on. And the even rows, you're only going to put four. So the even rows are not as long down here. They kind of go, they kind of start up a little ways and go this way. Okay. The, the odd rows are going to be longer but there's still going to be a little bit of a gap at the bottom. So if you're, if you're thinking you're not getting it done correctly, there is a little gap at the bottom. Okay. So when I did started doing this, they tell you to tape all the little, you know, they tell you to lay your little triangles down and then put tape over it and then, then sew it and then pull the tape off everyone. And I thought I'm never going to get this done if I have to pull all that tape. So I used glue stick. I used my little sew line glue stick, okay? And this works really well. You don't have to put any tape on and you can just zip it down and put and stick the little the little um, half square triangles down and they they work very well that way. Um, I'm always in, you know, I'm always wanting to find faster ways to do things and the tape really um, I have a hard time with tape because it, I can't always get it out of the stitches and then you see it. So I went ahead and used my glue stick. Okay. So the first part of the instructions here is like row one. Um, this is row two. Or actually, I'm sorry, this is row one. And then what it does, you put them all down and then it sews it down with the line. Okay. And then you're going to turn the page here. And then row two, as you can see, is a little shorter. So it starts up a little further. And you're only going to put four little triangles on the even numbered rows. And then you're going to put them down. I just glued mine. And then it does a line to sew it down. Okay. So it's the same, the same, um, uh, you know, the same, what I want to say, the, the, the same process each row. Okay. But the odd rows have five triangles and the even rows only have four. Okay, so what I did is I did like half the rows. So there's 10 rows total, and it tells you down here when you get down towards the bottom on step 11, it shows you, you know, the steps that you need for each row. And I went through row number five. So I'm ready for row number six, which is going to be a short row. So it's only going to have four little, um, four little triangles. And I'm going to go up on my machine to step number 13. So it's going to be just the same as if I were starting from the beginning, except I'm doing a short row first instead of a long row. Okay. So I'm going to go down to step, step number 13 on my machine. Because that's the next row that I have to do. 
okay? And it's going to be the row that's going to sew out with the little tick marks on it to show me where to put my little triangles. Okay. Hi, Nancy. People are coming in. Hi, everybody. Okay, so it's sucking here. I got and my machine's going to move here because I got to that. Okay, so I still have my yellow thread in, and it's ready to sew my placement line for my row number six. And it would be the same for row one, but row one's going to have the five. Okay, so we'll do the five row next. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So it does take a little bit of time, but it's not hard with the, I think it's very fast with the glue stick. Okay, so get a little closer here and see what I'm going to do. And the hardest part for me is to keep getting from getting the same colors of little half square triangles all together. So do the best you can. <laughs> I've been doing the best I can. So there's a little tick mark here. There's one here, one here. So the tick mark, you're actually going to be overlapping these. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue under to the right of the line. Okay between the first, second, and third tick marks. And let's see, I think we're gonna put, let's put one of these on. So you can see that the little triangle is you're gonna go from the, the point, from the first tick mark to the third tick mark, okay? Like that. And I just stuck it down to the, to the fabric with the glue stick. And now I wanna do another one. So this time we're gonna go from the second tick mark to the fourth tick mark. So I'm gonna put some more glue in there, second to fourth tick mark. And let's see, hmm. I think we need this light colored one maybe. So do the best you can to keep them mixed up. I, I only have four fabrics, so um, I'm doing the best I can to keep, keep them kind of mixed up, okay? So this one was between the second and the fourth tick mark. So they have, you can see how I'm overlapping right here, okay? And then we're gonna do the next ones, but again, we're gonna overlap. So this is the one, two, one, two, three, four, the third and the fifth tick mark. So let's see, let's try, let's try this one there. I'm gonna put the tip there and the tip there. And remember, we're gonna have four on these rows. So we're actually then, second I get a little hair down here. Okay. This one, we're going to go from the, the fourth tick mark past that one because we have to, we have to overlap them. Okay. So I'm going to start there and let's see which one looks good there. I think maybe this one. Okay. So I'm going to lay this one in and stick it down. Okay, so you can see how they're 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 um, like they're overlapping, and then they're not like right on top of each other. Okay, so this is row six that I'm doing right now. So it's going to be an even one. So it has just the four um, colors. So there are four. So I try when I do a four, I try to make you know one of each color if I can. I try. I've been trying to keep them as you know mixed up as I can. But all right. So now we got those and stick them down well with your finger. You got them on the glue. And now I'm going to put this back in. And the next step then is going to sew them down to the fabric. And without the tape on there, it's so nice because then you don't have to try to dig all that tape out from underneath those stitches. And the tape holds them, or the glue hold, seems to hold them down real nicely because it sews over it twice. Okay, so there's my tack down line. Okay. And then the next one is going to be one of the longer rows. So this is like row one. So it's actually row, um, what? This is going to be row seven that I'm going to do now. So it's going to come all the way out to the end here. Okay. So we'll do the placement line. So it's the same thing over and over. You do a placement line. There's the little ticks and it's doing the little tick marks and you're going to put your fabric on the right hand side of the lines. Okay, so we've got the tick mark here. So 
each one of the half square triangles covers two tick marks. Okay, so we're gonna let me pull this up so you can see it a little bit better. So we're gonna go from one to three, and I'm just gonna do like one area at a time with the glue. One to three. Okay, that'll be the first one. Let's see which one will look good there. Let's try this one. Okay. I have a bunch of those together, but oh well. Okay. It's hard to find that many yellows. <laughs> so I have a lot of yellow fabric. Okay. So here's between the first tick mark and the third tick mark. And then we're going to do two to four for the next one. So they overlap. Is this making sense? You just have to kind of look at the pictures. And then um, I hate, like I said, I hated to do all of this at the same because the tonight because it would take a little while to get through so i started in the middle okay let's see maybe we'll do this one I'm trying to see which one oh maybe this one okay we'll do this one i mean i changed my mind a lot so don't mind me okay we're going to do this one and stick it down to the glue okay and then we're going to do the next two remember we're going to overlap them so we're going to go from here to here and when you sew this out you'll see the little tick marks very plainly they're pretty easy to see let's see let's try this one nope. give me this darker like that so this one's going to have five this row is going to have five so the odd rows have five little half square triangles okay so then we're going to go we're going to start in the middle of the this one and go over to the end and let's see, maybe this one. Sometimes I have to do like a duplicate one to make it turn out right, but this will work okay. I have a lot of these. I like these light colored ones, so I have a tendency to stick those in there. <laughs> okay, so there's the fourth one. One, two, three, four. And now we got to put one more at the end. So we're going to start in the middle here and we're going to move the glue out there. Okay. And let's do one of these. If I can get a hold of it. And they said you'd have a couple of these left over when you're done. Okay. So there's my fifth one on that row. Okay. This was the odd row. So it's going to have five. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in and make sure they're good and stuck down. And then I'm going to sew the tack down line. So this is the same thing over and over for the whole thing. Okay. Is this making sense? I know it looks really hard. And when I first started, I'm like, what the heck? I was really having, I was struggling with it. And then I really looked at the instructions and the pictures. And it's like, oh, now I understand what they're doing. They're just making the applique piece. But it's kind of cool because it's raw edge applique with an extra piece underneath. Okay, so now we're ready for an even row. And this is step number 17 in my machine. So this is row number eight. Have to do a couple more rows yet. So this will only have four. Okay, so there's only four. We'll do the same thing. Okay. So I'll start here, and this is the what this is an even row, so it's going to start a little higher. Okay. So we'll get my glue stick. And this little thin one works the best because they it's just then you don't have to have so much glue on here. Okay, so I'm going to have between the first and the third one. And let's see. Which do you think will look good there? We'll stick one of these over here. We don't have too many of these light ones over on this side. Okay. Stick it down. Okay. Then I'm going to start in the middle of this one and go to, so that this is between the second and the fourth tick, the little tick marks. Some glue there. And let's see, which one looks good there? This is, this is what makes it hard for me. I'm not very good at this part. But the other one, I thought mine turned out pretty good. Okay, so I have a couple here together, but you know what? It's okay. It may not even be together because when you get to cutting this later, you're going to have to cut part of it up. So now we're going to use between the third and the fifth little tick mark like that. And then we're going to put in another one of these. Let's see, let's do an orange one. 
maybe, if I can get a hold of them. Okay, and then we'll do between the one, two, three, the fourth one and the, and then it's off the end. Okay, so we'll do this one here and then go up this way. Let's see if we can find one that fits in there. How about this one? Okay. So that's, this one's only going to have four because it's an even row. Okay. And then I'm going to put it back in the machine. And step number 18 is going to be the tack down line. Wait, and then thread my machine. Jan's asking if we're having freeze ups. Is anybody else having freeze ups? Or are you guys okay? It doesn't look like it's freezing on my end. Okay. So now we're ready for another placement line. Okay, so now this is gonna be row number nine. So this is an odd row. So it's gonna be five. So we're, this is step number 19 in my machine. So basically what I did is I just skipped the first five rows and started in the middle. So you didn't have to sit here and watch me put little squares on <laughs> for, for an hour. Cause it did take me a little while the first time I did this, so. Of course, I was trying to read the directions and figure out what I was doing, and I was having trouble with the fabric, and you know, so okay. So now we're down here again. Let me pull this back a little bit. We're gonna be it's gonna go all the way down to the end here. So I'm gonna go between the first and the third tick with my glue. It's on the right hand side. And let's see, let's do this one. I don't know. Let's see. I always have trouble with this. Let's let's just do this one. And then we're going to do, we're going to go up and start in the middle of this one and go to the, we're going to go up to the fourth one, second to fourth one. Oops, kind of running out of glue there. Second to fourth one. And put another one of these in. Like that. I thought it was very ingenious how they did this. And then to use it as an applique, I thought it was so cool. Okay, so I'm going to put this down. And these are raw edge. They actually look pretty good um, when they're raw edge. And my, these are not super ravelly fabrics. So, okay, so let's put another one in. Let's see. What kind of color should we do? I have everything together now. So, oh, well. We'll just do this one. I can't get a hold of it, though. Okay, I'm put this one in. So it's going to have five because this is an odd row. And we're going to start in the middle of this one, go up to here. So I really figured that the glue stick made it go so much faster. <laughs> it was really slow with the um, tape. I tried it a couple rows with the tape and then I had tape stuck in there and I couldn't get the tape out. So, all right. And then... I'm going to, then we need, this is an odd row. One, two, three, four. We need one more yet. So we're going to start here and go out. Let's see. I want one of these. Okay. Like that. Okay. We got that in there. Make sure you push them down well so that they're nice and glued down before you try to do the tack down line. Okay. There we go. And then number 20 in my machine is a tack down line. And then we got one more row to do, and then we're going to do row 10. It says there's three triangles left over. I think it says, yeah, three. Okay. All right. So then the, the last um, placement line is step number 21. So we're going to run step number 21 to do the placement line, and there'll only be four triangles because it's row 10 that we're doing. And it kind of runs right along the edge of your basting stitch or your tack down stitch for the whole piece of fabric. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. Okay. So the, the, it's very repetitious, just the same thing over and over. And I think you can get, do it. No problem. All right. So let's try this one here. So remember this one's going to start up a little higher because it's a even, it's only going to have four. Okay. And this one, I can't see the tick mark very well because it's right here. So they put the tick mark 
on the inside on this one. So I found it a little hard to see what I was doing. So I had to kind of watch where I was going a little bit more with this one. Okay, so let's do one of these. I'm having a heck of a time getting a hold of these things tonight. There we go. Put this one in. And I think it's about, you can kind of tell where it's at because it's like about where the little tip of your triangle is going to be. So this one's a little harder because it doesn't, the tick is on the inside, the last row. Okay, and then we're going to go from here, oops, to here for the next one. we got to put four on here. Let's see. Let's do maybe this one. To the other tick mark, it's right there. And then we need one more. So it's going to go from like the middle here. I have a nice little row of, ye of yellow ones there. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know if there's another one. Oh, I could stick. Let me stick this one in here. I don't know if it would make it any different. Let's stick this one in here instead. Sorry, guys. I like to change my mind. Okay. See, then I only have two there together. So we'll just try that instead. And then I'll put that one, the other one in here. So here, if you're going to go across here, so I get my glue stick. It's kind of ooky. Okay. I'm going to put none of these on here. Like this. Okay. Okay. And then that one's a little, it's a little hard to see. Like I said, it's a little hard to see um, where those ticks are. But you know that they're going to be kind of in the cent, you know, the, the middle of the half square triangle is going to be like where the point is down here. Okay. So then get those all stuck down. And then the number 22 on the machine is going to tack this down. And look, I think I did it. See, I have one, two, three left over. They said you'd have three left over. And I do. That's a miracle in itself. Okay. Now, step number 23 is the um, number 23 is the star that was up in that top left hand corner. So don't you don't need to stitch that out. It says right here, step number 23, you don't stitch it out. OK, that was just an orientation mark. OK, OK, so then what we're going to do is we're going to remove this. This is done. So this is our applique piece for the pineapple. Isn't that cool? So then it has all these cute little, these like these cute little, you know, how pineapples have those little spines on them. So it's so cool. So then it says to remove the project from the hoop, rotate the project so the pineapple triangles are pointed downward, starting at each end of the top tack down line as indicated with black lines. So um, right where the tack down lines are right here and right here over here. You're supposed to, um, as indicated with black dots in the diagram, use a ruler and rotary cutter to cut vertical side as shown with red dashes. So we're going to just cut this off along the sides right here where the basting stitch was that held my fabric in. So like right here on this side and then right over here. Okay. It's going to be right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to move the camera over a little bit. So you can see me do that because that because we need to um, we'll have to trim the other block too, but we don't we need to embroider first. So just a second, I'll just slide this over a little bit. My foot controller cords in the way. There we go. And you won't be able to see terribly well because it's not too close. But I'm going to leave it up so you can see what I'm going to do. Okay. When I get my ruler. I got my pop rulers out. I forgot that I had to trim this one with a regular ruler. Lay this over here for a minute. Okay, so we'll pop this out and we're just going to trim it on the sides right here. On each side. So in other words, we're going to be trimming these triangles off over on that side. And then there's no triangles on this side to, tr to trim off. And we're just going to trim the... We're just going to trim the sides, not the top and the bottom. All right, so I'm just going to trim along that line that held my fabric to my stabilizer. On this side, 
And then this one, you kind of have to find it. So it's kind of in the, yeah, so it's kind of in the, where the tips of the triangles are. So it's a little hard to see. You have to kind of pull these up and look. So you get it about right there. Okay, so it's about right in there. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to trim this up. There we go. Just get that out of the way. Okay, so there's our little applique piece. Okay, and then it's now we're going to start the second part of it. So this is actually going to be our applique for the pineapple. And you can see there's the lines in the back. And it has still has, we're just going to leave the stabilizer on though. Okay. So let's go ahead and put the camera back and then let's do this part. So this part's really fun. Because it looks so neat. And depending on how you lay your little applique on there, it, it'll make your, you know, it'll make your pineapple look totally different. Okay. So now I need to get the other design. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the other design up in my machine. And it's the one for the whole, um, the, the front of the pillow. Okay. So I did sew the little top out because that takes a little while to sat, sat and stitch all that. So I didn't want you to sit here and have to watch the machine sew for half an hour. So I, I went ahead and sewed that out and we'll just talk that through that. But I got to find my design here. Let's see, it's in the June folder. And okay, so then this is the one that has the actual pineapple on it. So here's my little pineapple. Who's saying that about their left hand? Oh, um, Jenny, you may need to, do you have one of these um, Martelli ones like I have? You might need to oil it. You might need to take a drop of oil and put it down in there um, on the blade because sometimes they do get kind of hard. So sometimes they need to be oiled because if you ever notice that when you put a new blade in, the blade is oily. So that's how they get oil. But sometimes you need more oil. So just you can take it apart in here. You can take it apart in here and then pull this little thing off. Just be careful not to cut yourself. But then you can drop a little bit of oil down in here and that'll help. So try that or change your blade. Because I have to oil mine every now and then because I use it so much and sometimes it, in between I have to oil a little bit. Okay, so now what I have done with this one, this is also in a five by seven hoop. I have taken my, my, um, backing, my background fabric with the little polka dots and I have my shape flex on the back, okay? I have taken my regular fabric glue stick, my Dritz one, and I glued the fabric down to my tearaway like we've done for almost all these pillows. And then I've hooped it and, and just basically eyeballed it and hooped it in the, the hoop. I don't always do all the, the marking and all that stuff because it's not really necessary. They give you plenty of fabric, okay? So this is already in there with my tearaway on the back, all right? Then the first step is just a simple applique for this top part of this, this pineapple. So I just did the placement line. So that's step number one is the placement line. And I used fresh green. I used the light green. And then I laid my piece of fabric down. And the sec second step is the um, tack down line for the pineapple top, you know, for the leaves or the, the foliage at the top. Then I trimmed it close to the stitches and I used my fresh green for the satin stitches. So then it satin stitches it around. And then the, the, that's the third step. And then the fourth step is this little decorative stitch. I don't know if you can see it very well, the little decorative stitch. And I used my, um, my darker green, my forest green for that. So I, I made it light green around the outside edge and dark green for the decorative stitch. Okay. So that's pretty, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's a pretty simple applique there. This takes a little while to sew out. It took about 10 minutes for all those satin stitches. So I didn't want you to have to sit here and just watch the machine sew forever. So I went ahead and did that. So I knew you could all do that. Okay. So now we're ready for this thing right here. Okay. We got our little, basically we have our fabric that we just made. 
and we're going to do another applique. Now, the one thing with this one, though, we also need to have, give me a second, I'm going to leave my yellow thread in because that's what we're going to be using. But you do need to have a piece of, of the um, water soluble topping, you know, the clear stuff. You need to have a piece of that. Now, it tells you to do two pieces, but I found it, it was easier just with one. So I'll show you what I did. So just get one piece of um, the water soluble, clear water soluble topping and, you know, make it big enough that you can tape it down over this whole area because you don't want to catch any of these little flippers on here. OK. All right. So the first step. That with the applique for the, the pineapple, then um, it's step number five in the machine. And it's just going to be the placement line for this thing. OK, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to I left my yellow thread in. And we're just going to, whoops, second here, helps if I would set it and go to the correct step. So step number five. Give me a second. I haven't got it to the right step yet. Okay, so here's our placement line that we're going to do for our little pineapple here. And then if I flip the little flipper down, the machine runs better. I do that all the time. I don't, you know, this little thing over here, you know, the machine tells you if you don't have it down. I'm always doing that. So here's our little pineapple. And I'm on the bottom page six, turn into page seven of the instructions. Okay. So now it says to place the completed part one, which is this little thing here, right side up, completely covering the placement line. Place water-soluble topping completely covering the placement line, okay? So, so completely covering it. You want to have this on too. And then you want to tape this stuff. You want to tape that down. I'm going to go ahead and give me a second here. I'm going to go ahead and just cut the stabilizer off the top too just to get it out of my way. A little less on here. I'm just going to cut the stabilizer. It didn't tell you to do that, but I'm just going to cut this out of my way. Don't cut your little, little tip points. It's one of this out of my way to, so it's not, it's easier to tape. Take these off of there. There we go. Then it's easier to tape. All right, but you do want to tape that water soluble down because if you want, you don't want it moving around. So then what I'm going to do is, you know, here's our placement line and we got plenty of fabric here. So then you can kind of play around with how you put it on here, where it lands. And then you know how your pineapple is going to be. So, you know, you've got kind of short sides over here. So don't get it too far that way. And make sure you got it covering up the bottom down here. Okay. And make sure it's covering up the top. So I think we're good up here. Make sure we got enough up down here. And if you want to, you know, slide it this way a little bit because you like the colors you've got better, you know, just kind of. Slide it around until you think you've got it about where you want it. And make sure everything's covered under here. Okay, so I'm just flipping this up to make sure I got everything covered. Okay. And then I'm going to take my water soluble. And I'm going to lay this over the top. I think I'm going to flip it this way a second. Mine has a little cut in it. So I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to get some of my Kimberbell paper tape. And I'm going to tape this down at the top and at the bottom. Oops, I think I got my thread too. Okay, and then I'm going to tape it down here at the bottom too so that it doesn't scoot around. And you can tape it on the sides, but I think I'll just kind of hold the sides a little bit. I'll just hold them out like this so they won't wrinkle. Okay. And then we're going to change our color to our, of our thread to whatever we want um, to have for our applique. Our, um, there's a decorative stitch around there, and I'm just using that same yellow, okay? So I didn't change mine. So the next step, step number seven or six in the machine, is going to be the tack down line for our pineapples. So let's just go ahead and we'll, I'll just hold this out so it doesn't, doesn't wrinkle on me. Remember when I did this the first time, I had to use a bigger hoop, so it was a little easier to tape it than in the smaller hoop. Okay. 
And that's why if you kind of slide it side to side, you can decide what little parts you want of your pineapple. Now I've got some, I have several in a row here, but you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be just fine. Okay, and the reason you wanna use the same color here is that the decorative stitch that's gonna go on here next is actually, um, is actually the um, like a motif stitch. So you don't want, it, it'll show through a little bit. Okay. All right. So it says tear the, the next step says to tear this water cycle off. I did not do that. I left it on. Okay. And then I trimmed through the water soluble. Because otherwise you got to put another piece over here when it goes to do the decorative stitch, but you really don't need to. I just trimmed through the water soluble and left it on the inside and it was absolutely fine. So I'm going to trim around the outside edge of this now, just like any other applique. Un untape this here, but I'm not going to take the stabilize or the uh, water soluble out of the middle. I'm going to leave it. Oops, second here. If I can get these tapes off of here. Okay, so then we're gonna just tape, but don't but don't pull this off. Just leave it on there. And I'm just gonna cut through. And this is a little bit hard to cut through because you know you got a piece of stabilizer in there and all these little layers. So get as close to the stitching as you can because it is just a motif stitch. Okay, so this is just a big bulky applique, <laughs> more or less. Okay, so I'm getting around there. It was kind of fun after I got the hang on what was going on. I was like, at first I was like, what is going on? And then after I really read the direction a little bit more, then I thought, oh, that makes sense. And we're just making an applique. And you can see I've kind of got my scissors kind of tipped towards me. It's kind of thick and a little bulky. So um, I'm trying to stay real close to the stitches as I, as I can. Okay, let's see here. You know, see, I've left the, 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 the plastic still in here. And you're also cutting through that stabilizer, which doesn't make it any easier. Okay, so we get down here. Getting close here. There it goes. Okay, so it's kind of thick. But it worked real well just to leave the stable, just leave the stabilizer or the water soluble topping just in there. And this is not going to catch anything on the foot. It was fine sewing it that way. So that one I didn't have to use two pieces. Although I do have a little spot up here. I think I need to trim just a little closer. This little spot up here because it is just a motif. It's a pretty wide one. I'll turn this in so I can see if I can get this just a little closer up here. Okay. All right, so we're going to turn this back on. And then the step number seven is going to be the decorative stitching around here. And I just left my yellow thread in there because it matched my pineapple. Isn't that cool? I just thought this was a really cool technique. I'd never tried this before. So we basically made a piece of fabric to use as an apple. I thought that was really cool. All right, so it's just going to go around the outside edge. It's kind of thick, so it might sound like a little poundy. And then let's see. What is an Oh, then we're going to trim. I'm getting ready to put this together. This was a really fun one. I, I was a little bit scared about it when I first saw it because I was like, wow, all those little pieces. And it, I, I started cutting, and I'm like, wow, all those little squares and everything. And and it actually went together really easily. That was cool. Okay, yeah, so the next step is gonna be the trimming. Anybody have any questions? Everybody doing okay? I, this was just a really fun, different technique. I've never tried anything like this before, so. I don't know that they've ever done, has anybody ever seen if they've ever done any other designs that do this kind of technique? I never. I don't think I've ever seen any other ones done like this. And it is raw edge. So what I did with my little pillow, I'll pull the little pillow up here while this is sewing. Um, what I did with my little pillow is afterwards I kind of cleaned up, you know, the edges a little bit. 
and, and it made it look real nice. I mean, it is going to be a little bit gravelly, but that's the, the goal. It's raw edge appliques. So, um, but if you, this fabric is pretty nice and it's also on the bias since it's kind of like, you know, you, you cut it this way on the bias, but um, I do have a, little, a few little gravels. Wasn't too bad. Yeah, I thought it was different. Yeah, so this is a pretty wide motif stitch that's going around. And see, I've just got the one piece of, it, I just left the, the water soluble in the center. It worked out just real fine. And then we'll remove that here in a second. That way I didn't have to use two pieces because I think when I brought, when I was working on this, I only had one piece and I thought, oh, well, can't I just use one piece and it worked fine. So, okay. So there's that. And then what I had to do to get this out of the center, I just kind of took my scissors and got a start on it to pull it out of the center. If I can get my fingers in there. There we go. It came out pretty easily. There we go. Like that. And then, you know, after we get it all together, then I'll clean up some of my little, some of my little uh, hairs, you know. So I thought the other one looked really good. So there. So there's that. Got that part done, okay? So what do you think? Isn't that cool? Looks like a pineapple, doesn't it? I thought it was really cool. I like the four, it, the hardest part for me was finding four yellows. <laughs> four different yellows that all look nice together, so. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and take this out of the hoop now. So this is the next step, and then we're gonna trim this one. So give me a second. I'm going to um, move the camera again. And I need to press this a little bit on the edges. Leave the paper, leave the tearaway on, okay? And I'm going to, oops, let's go to sewing so I can move the arm out. Then you can see a little bit better. If I move the arm all the way over, then it's easier for me to move the camera over further. And then let me, let me um, press this real quick. I always press this really quick with my um, iron so that the paper is nice and flat. Otherwise, it... Um, there we go. If you can see, I think you'll be able to see. Okay. And then we're going to, this has kind of got a specialty trim or a specialty um, trimming too. Did I get my iron to turn on a little bit? Okay, so there's my little piece. Okay, so hopefully, I, oops, I'm going to move my computer a little closer so I can see a little bit better what, what you're seeing. Okay, so now we have to trim this. So it's a kind of an odd size. So we're going to use two rulers, two of the orange pop rulers. This one, um, I leave, I left my tearaway on. This one says we're going to use the four and a half by six and a half and the six and a half by eight and a half because it actually is going to end up being four and a half by eight and a half. So it's kind of long and narrow. Okay. So let's see, we're going to, I'm going to center this visually like that. Give me a second here. And then we're going to put the bigger ruler on. I always seem, seem to get them upside down, but that's okay. So this one, we're going to, for the first cut, we're going to cut on the sides, but on the second one, we're going to remove the ruler before we trim because we want it to be longer. So we want it to be four and a half inches wide. So that's what this one is. Second here, I kind of got it crooked yet. Try that again. Kind of got it crooked yet. Okay. look better it's a little bit there that looks better okay and then we're going to put this one back on okay i'm going to turn it towards me and remember i'm left-handed so i'm turning it and i'm going to start on the right with my left hand if you're right hand you're going to start on the left okay and i'm going to just trim the outside the two up and down vertical sides okay this side and then we're going to turn it around this way and we're going to trim this side first okay then i'm going to pull this out 
And then we're going to trim the bottom. So this one's going to be the eight and a half. So it's eight and a half this way. Okay. Trim the bottom. Hopefully I didn't move it too much. I think I got it okay. I always have trouble. I like it when there's two rulers in there because then they um, don't move as easy. I think I kind of moved this one. Okay. I think we're okay. Like that. All right. So there's. See, it's long and skinny. So then we're going to take this other ruler and we're going to connect the lines. So we'll connect the lines here. I do better with this other ruler. That's the orange pop rulers. I have trouble seeing the edges. There we go. Must be the color. This one's one of those. I like these yellow rulers because it's easier to see the color underneath the fabric underneath. There we go. This is a Missouri star ruler. I love this one. It's five by 15 or something like that. Okay. So there is our little skinny piece that goes in the center of our top. So I'm going to go ahead now and remove the stabilizer. Okay. Remove my tear away. And you can take it out of the center too if you want to. I usually just leave it in the center. I just take it off from around the outside edges. Oops, this one's kind of stuck. All right. There we go. Okay, so there's the back. And I'm ready to sew this together. So now we're going to move the machine to the sewing. And we're going to sew this together. It's so fast to put it together now. We're almost done. The second here, I'm going to move the camera back. And we'll become a sewing machine out of our embroidery machine here. This was a really fun one. I really, and this was, I did, like I said, I'd never done anything like this. It was a very interesting technique. So I'll get this hoop out of the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove my yellow thread and I'm going to put some sewing thread in. Got some red. I already pre-hemmed, so we'll, we'll talk about the hemming. Get some red thread here. Maybe. Got it. And I'll put my sewing foot up. I'll move my computer a little bit. It's ah, sitting on top of me here. All right. Find my foot. We'll change the foot here. I'm just going to put my J foot on because um, we did, we're going to do a quarter inch seam. Now I, I like to use that Q02 and I use my J foot. So, all right, and I'm going to go to my Q tab. Okay, there's my Q tab over here. Oops, sorry. Q tab and then 02. Q02 is my quarter inch piecing stitch. And it moved my needle over towards the right hand side so I can run my fabric right along the edge of my right edge of my foot. Okay, and I've got red. Whoops, I'm going to put my red bobbin into. Hopefully I have enough bobbin thread, otherwise you're gonna watch me wind bobbin. I just have, this is some Pima cotton in the red. Matched pretty well. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the two little pieces. Remember we had these little border pieces. So I'm gonna sew my little border pieces to each side of my pineapple. That's the first step. And that's with a quarter inch seam. So I'm just going to lay these here. We'll see how Jan did to see if I did a pretty good job of cutting those. Might stick a pin in it. Let's see how I did here. Yeah, that did pretty well. <laughs> They're about the right length. I don't always do very well with the with the cutting. So, and I don't think this fabric's really directional. So you, I think everything's okay. This was that cherry, the little cherry fabric. Can't remember. I guess I did the other one in the same fabric. I got some kits, so um, I cut one out of my own fabric. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna sew this on together. This is a quarter inch seam. Second, I gotta plug in my foot controller if I can find the other end of the cord. All 
All right. Q02. So can I got to get this just so I can get my hand in here. There we go. Drop my needle, and then we're going to do our quarter inch seam along each side. I just sewed, I just put them both on at the same time. And you'll notice I had a little trouble with the other one, too. Um, there's kind of a bump right in the middle there where the pineapple is, so you may have to kind of steer it and keep it a little bit straight. I think mine got a little wonky here, so we may, yeah, it, it kind of went boop like this, so we'll we'll fix that here. I didn't feel it in time. That, that pineapple, you know, was kind of thick there with that extra fabric, so you have to kind of help it a little bit stay nice and straight in there. There we go. Otherwise, my that side would have looked a little wonky. All right, so we'll turn it over and let's do the other side. Make sure I got it straight here. And I'm going to, now this one's got, this is gonna be the same way. So you're gonna to have to kind of watch because when you get up over that little bump there, you don't want it to go crazy on you. There we go. Gonna pass that. When you get up to the top, it's okay. All right, there's that. We're going to have our top put together here. Just a second, and I'm going to go press this open. Here's our little top with our pineapple. Isn't it cute? Okay, so let me go press that open. Oh, there he is. Got it all pressed open. I think those are so cute. That was just something just very different. I was very impressed with it. And then we're going to go ahead and put our envelope back on, just like we always do. Um, I first did my, you know, I turned it over a quarter of an inch and another quarter of an inch to make my hem. And then I just stitched it down on both sides. It's on the longer side of the two backs, okay? And then the backs are gonna be put on. Now they put their backs on horizontally. I always have a tendency to put mine on vertically. So it doesn't matter, either way works just fine. I always put mine on this way. So we're gonna put it right sides together with the hem side in, okay? I'm gonna match up the raw edges. And then I'm gonna pin it on. And I'm gonna put a little pin where that little, um, that little seam was to make sure that it stays nice and flat for me. Okay. And then I always like a pin on where the, you know, the hem is. So I know exactly where that's going to be. Okay. So we'll go with this side. And down here. I just thought this was so cute. I've had so much fun doing these. I hope you guys have enjoyed these little bench buddies. They are so fun and they have so many different techniques in them. That's what I think has been so cool. And next month's have some more techniques in them yet. So we're going to learn some new stuff next month too. So I've just really enjoyed these a lot. So it feels like I've learned a lot by doing them. And I've been wanting to make them for a long time, and this was a good excuse. So I got, got them all done. We only have a couple months left, so. The July ones are really cute. So I've got the July ones back here. I'll, I'll show you some stuff that I've been working on for the July ones before we end here. Is next month the bike? Yes, ne next month is the bike, Cindy. Yep. And the bike, actually, to be quite honest, I'm going, I pre-sewed that because the whole thing is just sewing. There's one teeny tiny little applique in the bicycle. And what it, it what that one is, is all about the embellishments. So we're going to spend more time with the embellishments <laughs> on the, on the July ones. Uh, we'll do, the sewing on the square one was really easy, but it's all about the embellishments on the, on the July ones. Okay. So now when I do these, remember, um, Got all of yours done. Oh, is that Lynn? Yep, Lynn's working ahead. <laughs> She's being a dutiful student working ahead. Okay, so remember, we want to know where that overlap is. 
because I like to double sew that or actually triple sew it so that I don't have it break open when I take my little pillow out. So I'm going to start right where that is. I'm going to knot off. And then I'm going to sew across it and then we're going to back up over it and sew across it again. Okay, so I'm going to go to this pin over here. And then I like to just back up over it because I want that to be nice and strong there because that's my problem was I was always breaking this little seam open right there. Okay, and sew over it again. And then I'm just going to sew around till I get to the other side. Okay. Yeah, Lynn said she she found the August ones rather challenging. Is that the one that was kind of challenging, Lynn, was one of the August ones? I haven't looked at those yet. That's the next thing. <laughs> I'm still working on July. Okay, so we're going to get around here to the corner. I'm just going to sew all the way around. This is those little envelope backs, you know. So here's the other piece here. So it's right here and right here, okay? So when I get to this one, I'm going to go over it and I'm going to sew to the other pin and then I'm going to back up over the top, over it again. And then I'm going to sew over it again. That way I know it's nice and sturdy. Okay. All right. Turn the corner again. Go down here, almost done. Yeah, this one was easy to put together. Some of them are the harder ones that you have to put binding on and stuff, but this one was nice because it was easier. All right, down here and then I'm gonna tie off and we're all the way around. The square one, yeah, Lynn said the square one was a little tricky. It's one of those flip and folds and it's a pretty, pretty intense one. It has a lot of pieces. I saw that when I looked at it. Okay, so here is our, whoops, looks like I forgot a pin. Pull those pins out of there. All right, so then we're gonna turn this right side out and I'm gonna do grandma's little trick. One thing I always cross out is clip the corners. No, I put a big no there. So I'm gonna use my first finger. I'm gonna put it into the corner and I'm gonna pull down to the seam line and then I'm gonna push the other side into the seam line and make the corner hang on to it and flip it right side out. Okay, and then you have those beautiful corners without chance of cutting through them. Do the same thing, pull down and push in, hold the corner and flip it right side out. Okay, so there's that side, whoops, there's that side. I'm gonna get this one. Pull down to the seam, push down to the seam and hold the corner in and flip it right side out. And then we'll fix that. We'll finish the corners with the Floriani tool, with the precision turning tool. Okay. I just cut my fingernails, so I can't hang on to anything now. Okay. So there's that. Let me get my little Floriani tool here. Okay. And we'll just finish those up so they're nice and pointy. They look beautiful and they see there I didn't take anything out. I didn't cut. If you cut, I will guarantee you go right through the end. <laughs> I do every time. Okay. So then I'm going to take this over to my uh, ironing board after class. I will press this again. And here is my little pineapple pillow top. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. I just really, these were, this was really fun. So this is my first one. Okay, so here's the here's the, the finished one. I don't have my pillow form out here, so you'll have to look at the thin one I had the pillow form in, okay? So isn't that cool? I just really enjoyed making these. It was so much fun. Now this one I have kind of a funny little piece right here. So I might trim a little bit just to make that little funny piece go away. But other than that, I think it looks really good. Yeah, this little piece, see, I got, I got kind of a little bit of a piece here that really shouldn't be here. What are we going to make after we finish the pillows? You know, Cindy, I've been thinking about that. I don't know yet. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Because I really like having something that we do a couple of times each month, or once at least, so I always know exactly what we're doing. It makes it, makes it easier for me for the preps, for the class preps. So if you think of something you'd like to do, please let me know, okay? 
I really like that. Okay, so here's our little pillow. Isn't he cute? And see, I had different tops. This one had a different fabric on the top than this one did. Because I don't think I had enough to do both of them. I had enough of the other fabrics, but not. And, except this one. If you notice this one here, this one has a piece back. Whoops. Okay, the Kimberbell Cuties. I am going to do the Kimberbell Cuties, but that will be for the store. Um, that will be for the store for Kimberbell Club starting in January. So I am going to do the table toppers, but that's not going to be till January. And that will be a store class, but they will still be an online version. So if you're a long ways away, because I know, Cindy, you're, you're a ways away. So um, we're going to still have an online version of it. So you can join Kimberbell Club. Okay. Oh, Marianne's doing my little pillow. Isn't that cute? I love that little pillow too. So, so yes. So yes, I am going to do the cuties, but it will be for Kimberbell Club for the store, for Shield Sewing Center. And it'll start in January. So we will do those. Yes. Okay. All right. So the other thing I wanted to show you is we're going to not have class next week. So give me a second. I'm going to switch the camera over here quick. We're not going to have class next week because it's Father's Day. Okay. And then we will, um, the following week, we're going to work with, I got to find the right, there we go. Got to find the right microphone. The following week, the last one in June, we will be doing um, a scan and cut class and we're going to talk about the rotary blade, but it's kind of a class that's twofold. We're also going to talk about using the rotary blade, but that is the best way to cut felt on the scan and cut. And we need felt flowers on this pillow and on this pillow. So these are the July pillows, okay? So what we're going to do on the last week of July or June is we're going to learn how to use the rotary blade on the scan and cut to make these little flowers. So this is the bicycle for the July pillow. So this will be the first one we do. Okay. And we'll make these little um, daisies. And we're going to do these at the end of June on the scan and cut so we can learn about that rotary blade and, and you can cut them out with that. And then... On this pillow, this is the, the rectangular one. This one has daisies, but then it also has these rolled roses, okay? And this little pinwheel up here. So these are mostly, these are a lot of, um, are more like a lot of app or um, embellishment, okay? So we're going to, the scan and cut class we're going to do at the end of June is going to help us make these flowers, okay? And you can do them the way Kimberbell does them by you know, sewing them out and cutting them out with scissors if you don't have a scan and cut. But the scan and cut works really great for this with the rotary blade because that rotary blade is like the is like the greatest thing. But I've also been playing with I have I have cutting machines like die cutting machines. Um, you would like more scan and cut classes. I have my scan and cut here now, Cindy. So yes, I will try to do more scan and cut classes. Um, I'm going to do one in July as well. So I, I didn't have my machine here at dad's for quite a long time. And so I, I had to get it up here and have it somewhere where I could like lay it out so I could use it. <laughs> so I have it. I have that place now. So it's working. Okay. So, um, but I have a die cutting machine and it's called a Sizzix. Um, I, I have a Sizzix. They, they have the rolling machines and I have an electric one. So I've been playing with some other dies that make flowers because it's a lot faster to cut them out with the dies and aren't those cute? So I've been playing, so like this die has these two little roses, little flowers on it. So you can see they're pretty small. So I cut these out the other day and this is on the same die. And then I have another die that's a larger flower. Okay, so these are rolled flowers, but these are actually cut with a die instead of with the, the scan and cut. And then I did this one, I love this one. This one's cut in like three pieces. This is called a cabbage rose. So this is done with the dye also. So I'm going to show you this in July. We're going to talk about that machine a little bit in July. And then I also got this new dye. Oops, sorry, I dropped it. The new dye. I got this one and it's a bow. Isn't that cute? It's a little bow. I don't know if you can, if I can hold it well enough so you can see it. So that was really cute. So I got some new dyes to cut some of these little things. I love bows. So I thought that'd be cute. And, uh, but yeah, the scan and cut classes, yes, I can, I will try to do more scan and cut because I have it here now where I can use it. Aren't those cute? Yeah, I really love 
I love die cutting and I've done a lot of die cutting over the years, but I've kind of, I haven't done it too much lately and I really enjoy doing this. And I also love flowers and I thought, well, these felt flowers are so, so cute, but they do take quite a while to cut out with the scan and cut. It works extremely well, but it is a little bit more time consuming. And, but um, anyway, <laughs> is that you, Lynn? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm learning some new things. I'm learning to do, I'm also going to learn how to do some card making. So that's like a totally out of my <laughs> comfort zone. So I am going to learn, but I can use my cool, oh, the Sizzix, the, the, the die cutting machines. So card makers use them more, but I cut a lot of fabric with my die cutting machine. So I'm going to show you that in July. That's one of the scan and cut things I'm going to show you in July. It's not really a scan and cut thing, but we're going to have a little fun class in July. And I'll show you the, some, some fun thing with my scan and cut. And I'll show you that machine too. So um, I just had some new fun things that I've been learning. So, but anyway, that's going to be um, the end of June. So next week we won't have a class because it's Father's Day. Okay. And, but we will have Monday night class. Don't forget tomorrow night is the, the third installment of uh, Sweet Land of Liberty. Second live class and the third installment. And then we will do, um, tomorrow night we're going to do the, the little flower block and I've got it sitting right here, the flower block and, oh, and this piece block. So we're going to do this one here and then the flower down here. Whoops. Got to go the right way. This one. So we're going to do that one in the live class. And then I've got the other two, these two blocks right here. I've got those pre-recorded for you. Okay. So that'll be at seven. Don't forget the Monday night classes are at seven o'clock. So I'll remind everybody. And then uh, next week, we will we won't have a Sunday class, but we'll have the Monday class and we'll do the borders and the flanges of the pillow. So, okay. All right. So thanks for joining me, everybody. And I will see you um, tomorrow night at seven o'clock for uh, Sweet Land of Liberty. Thanks, everybody. Good night.